be exalted, be lifted up high, be exalted, be lifted up high in the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' name we we'll thanks, amen. Let's be no humble ourselves before the throne of grace to obtain mercy in those areas, in those corners, in those angles that we've missed it, that we've erred against it of his glory cry for mercy lord jesus king of kings have mercy lord of god have mercy that we need your blessing upon our lives we need your pity upon our life your compassion god. we know that this is lord god they let your mercy speak oh god that they let your mercy speak oh god let your mercy lord speak of our judgment let your mercy lord speak of our justice in the name of jesus christ in jesus name Friend, amen. Let's begin to welcome the spirits of the living God. This was where two or three are gathered in my name, the I am in your midst. Let's begin to welcome you into this place, into this arena, into this gathering. Father, we welcome you. Holy one of Israel, we welcome you. Holy God, great I am, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you, Lord, into this place. We welcome you, Lord, into this gathering. We welcome you, Lord, into this arena. Lock up and have your way. Lord, come and take your place. Lord, come and take full charge, total and absolute control. Oh God, be exalted. Oh God, take over, take over, take over, take over. We know not what to talk about. We know not wisdom from above. We don't know what to say. We don't know anything, but we know you know everything. Lord, speak through our mouth of clay. Take over the sermon. Take over everything. Take over the contribution. Take over the questions. Take over the answering. Take over, take over, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's begin to plead the blood of Jesus over this atmosphere. Through the blood of Jesus over our gadget, over our media network, over everything, over our house, over our lives, over the teacher of the day, the speaker of the day. Let's begin to plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. Daddy, we plead your blood, 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 we plead your blood over our lives, we plead your blood over our souls, we plead your blood over our spirit man. Do your blood, oh God, plead over your daughter that is going to take us today. The blood, 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 the blood of Jesus. Let it wash us, let it make us old, let it make us pure and pure and holy in the name of Jesus. Prayer, that they let our blood speak, that they let our blood speak, that they let our blood speak. For in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen. As let's begin to take authority over every contrary voice, every contrary spirit, every contrary force, every contrary power, territorial demons, military agents, spirits in the whatever they present. Let's begin to take authority over them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that in God will take authority, take authority over every forces of darkness, over every powers in the air. We take authority over them tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything of God that is not of you, monitoring spirits and agents, and He will take authority over them tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, authority, authority, authority right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, over the powers, over the forces of God that are not of you, the forces of darkness. Lord, we take authority over every demon of destruction, last minute destruction. Absent mindedness, we take authority in the name of Jesus Christ on seriousness. We take authority, lukewarmness, we take authority in the name of Jesus Christ, distraction, disconnection. Lord, we take authority in the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Holy one of Israel, we appreciate your holy name. We give you Lord all the praises and all glories and adoration. And we thank you because you've made it possible for us to gather here once again today. This is not because we merit it or because we paid you to be alive, because of your love and your grace and your mercy. You have made it possible for us to gather. Father, tonight to go, we'll commit administration into your able hands. Even as we are going to be talking about family, we're going to be talking about everything we're going to be talking about. Father, oh God, let it not be from our earthly wisdom. Oh God, let it be from the wisdom from above in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this speak through our mouth of clay. Speak through the mouth of your daughter. Oh God, use our Lord greatly and mightily so that at the end of all, there will be reasons and cause to glorify your name. We declare this service open in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Tiding us together, we will stand. Mommy, dear, I don't know if you're ready. Hallelujah. I greet you Praise the Lord. I'm sorry about that. I welcome you all in the name of the Lord. I think we have got a lot of co-hosts, so you can help us be bringing brethren in. Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, the I am that I am, Father, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. We thank you, Father, for the family of CHMI. We thank you that today is a family day. 
Lord, may you open our hearts to deeper understanding of the issues that we want to discuss, Father. We are not experts, O oh Lord. Life is a school that we only graduate when we As long as we are living, Father, we will learn something. A little each day is a lot in a year. As you continue to feed us, Father, we pray that we will grow in grace and in stature. And our hearts to understand and begin to live the way. We come against every spirit of destruction. We pray by the answer of Christ that you will lead us in the discussion. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we pray. <clears throat> Amen. Greetings, greetings, brethren. Welcome, welcome. Oh, let me take the host away from me. Oh, okay, I just want to give the host away. And we do not turn the host again. Praise the Lord. Greetings, greetings, brethren. It's always a pleasure to come in your midst, to come in your presence. We are highly honored indeed. We are um, blessed to be in your presence. Oh, something was not right with my computer. <laughs> okay, my connection. I think it's a lot better now. Okay, praise the Lord. Once again, I greet you all in the name of the Lord. Today is a family day, so we are going to discuss last week, we we're saying what are the needs of a woman? What are the needs of a woman? It's quite, it is not an exhaustive um, subject. So our contributions, we're looking at more, what can we do right? When we cover the topic, what are the needs of a woman? We know that a, a woman needs attention, a woman needs this, but at times there are certain things that women can do that deprive them of that attention in a relationship, in a family. So, yeah, we want to look at areas which we can build up uh, the brethren. Where are we missing it or what are the things that puts off a man? Those are the areas. So I thought by the grace of God, if I come, I will encourage some other men to come so that they also learn from our sisters, our wives, our mothers, what does a woman need? How do we break the ground between the two? We don't want to say, ah, only men are offended, ah, if men do this. Yes, the Bible says it's the responsibility of the woman to build the home. But we don't want to enslave them, to put them in a bondage. It takes two. It can never be called a home when she's alone. So we also want to balance the two. How can we make a relationship? How can we make a functional family? There are many things that are involved in family. When children are young, when children get to teenagers, when children get to a certain level in life, all these things, they impact in a marriage, in a relationship. Your relationship with the parents, you are moving out, you are going to somebody that you never lived with before, somebody that tells you, I love you, you are going into a family that you don't know anybody from that family. So these are challenges that our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, our wives face. Because they're not only coming as one person, but you're also coming, we're looking at the broader, um, the broader view of what can be done, how can we do it? So let us quickly revise or talk about things. When women, they say women need attention. What do we mean by attention? 
Sister Eunice, are you free to talk? What does it mean when you say a woman needs attention? Sister Eunice, are you available? Praise the Lord. Sister Claire Pokawa, are you available? Ah, okay, thank you. Sister Aitohan. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Please what, what do we understand when we say a woman needs an attention? What does it mean? I want I want a man to just say, ah, I need attention. I need attention. Is it a car? Is it a lorry? Is it a train? Is it an eloquence? What do we mean when we say a woman needs attention? Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, believe what I can say, but that for our married uh, sisters, I believe various women have uh, various needs and various ways of seeking attention, and they have desire different, it can be different form of attention. Uh, when a woman needs attention, it can be depends on what, you know, and sometimes it can be uh, for communication. She seeking to say something to the husband or she wants the husband to listen to her or hear out about something. And sometimes she can desire that attention. It can be like in various ways. Can be there are things she wants to put through to her husband, and also it can also be in the area of care. In the area of care, maybe she's not receiving enough care as she ought to, or she's not receiving enough attention uh, as she ought to. So she can also be desiring, seeking that attention from the husband to show her that care and love that she desires. Uh, because sometimes also men can also be carry the way men are men, men are different. So women, their makeup is made up of love and attention. So if they are not getting it, then they are gonna do anything to draw your attention. It can be nagging, it can be anything, but okay, I will stop there for now. How about you, sir? Praise the Lord. Oh, my beautiful sister brought something very interesting here. She said attention. She said, maybe I'm not giving you this, when men, I want a man who is listening now. Should I come and carry you? Or should I be carrying you when you want to, when you're going out? Should I be opening the door for a car if we have got a car? Or what? How, how do we tell this to a man? We want to understand when you say attention. What do we need? When a woman come, when, when you're coming, the man is stressed, you say, ah, Especially, you know, we, we, we have got two types of men. The chief culprits from them are pastors, men of God. Either they are praying, either they say, the wife, I'm praying. If not, if they are not praying, they are fasting. If they are not fasting, they are preaching. If they are not preaching, they are canceling. So this is the most affected area he has been on the pastors, the the. The, the women of the women who are married to the men, suppose men of God, but they can do all the things right. In that area, they're very good men of God, but very bad husbands, very bad fathers. They never have time for family. It's a very thin line to distinguish between the two. So we want to help those that are listening and say, okay, what can we do to strike the balance? Sister Jackie, what can be done to give for the woman to get attention? What do we need to do as men to get attention? Sister Jackie. So yes, sir. Yeah. I'm so, so gonna have to repeat or repeat out part this I'm so sorry.
did, did you hear did you hear the question or did you it? no i didn't hear the question sir i was doing something <laughs> We have recognized that a woman needs attention. Yeah. So we are trying to find out how do we strike the balance, giving attention to the woman that she doesn't complain, or is it she when she is nagging, giving stress to the man? Is that what we call attention? We need to define it as women. I want you as women to know what is the difference between nagging and seeking attention so that a man also knows he's trying to follow us. How? Because it's a very thin line. He is doing other things that he thinks is important. He could be going to school, he could be doing something. You come, you follow him. Until you talk to me, I'm not going to leave you in this. Is that what we call attention? Or we can call it bullying. <laughs> what men will feel bullied? Sister Jackie, you want to come in? <laughs> no, just laughing. Um, so your question is, how do how how would our, our men give our women attention? Is that your question? Yeah, we, we 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 want to see for a man, for a father who is following us. When we see a woman needs attention, is it the flowers that she needs? Is it a new dress? Is it a handbag? What is it when you talk about attention? Because I think more. I think it's more about compliments because um, when a man gives you attention, at some point you just get fed up of the whole thing. I don't think it should be like an. It should be you know them surprising moments. Maybe compliments. You look nice. You know. Maybe you got a new dress or something. Just the little moments is enough because sometimes when it's too much, even you yourself can be a bit like, oh, here he comes again. So I think it's when. For example, like a no, just to notice the woman is there, because I think men don't tend to notice. You can walk by, maybe you bought uh, um, um, something new. They will just, they will, they will, they will just look at you. I think it's just having that, being aware of, that the woman is there. I think that that's what's more important, being aware that we're there. And maybe it's just sometimes, you don't have to speak to us all the time if you don't want to, but just having a moment, maybe once in a week, <laughs> where you gather, come together and just speak. Amen. Sister Sonia, I can see you are burning already. Let, let us relieve what is in, in your chest already. Can you quickly come in? No, really, sir. She spoke, uh, she spoke powerfully, you know. <laughs> At least yeah, somebody needs to know you are there. You know, there are some men, the same thing you wear is what someone is wear, but they will be admiring that person. <laughs> so this person, ah, see how nice she look on this dress. But me too, I have it. You have never given me compliments whenever I wear this one. How come you notice? You, you are you are on Facebook, probably you take pictures, you look fine on your picture, but they will be on Facebook checking other ladies' picture and see the same thing you do. But when other people are doing it, they appreciate it, you see them, they spend time. They spend time on it, admire, you could see they are looking with admiration, but it might not be lost, but they just like it. But whenever you do it, it doesn't turn out to be good. They might even tell you, please go and sit down. What do you even know? But when it comes to other people, they, they appreciate it. So the women, like she said, need attention. Another thing, I think they need um, a listening ears and a willing heart. Amen. <laughs> Sister Lavet, are you available? Sister Odion. Good evening. I can see your smile. I hope you see an innocent smile. Let's hear what you're going to share with us. Sister Sonia said something. Or oh, Sister Jackie said, we need a compliment. Maybe once in a week. Is it enough if you give your wife compliment once in a week? Or in holiness, which time do you think you will be taking? Because they are not putting on makeup. We know with the makeup is spent one hour. A woman can spend two hours before the mirror. Now that we are in holiness, how much time do we spend decorating ourselves? That we want this attention to be noticed. We want to teach a man who is not in holiness. How? Because we say when somebody's dressed like this, it's also, it looks beautiful. 
everything looks fine. But how does your brother, because another man who said, no, they are seeing this woman with 15 colors at the first, like a Christmas tree. Uh, well, I would say even some people that are not in holiness, they, they like um, natural people. It's not all everybody that likes people that put on makeup. So, um, you know, most we women, most times we can be very confusing. And uh, um, we want to be, you know, we want all the attention. We want everything. We just want our husband to give us the whole attention. Amen. So maybe when it comes to like you put on your dress, now you are looking, you know, waiting for that normal, uh, usual, uh, you look good today and you did get that compliment. That one is already there. Or, or maybe there is a way that he normally gives compliments to you and, and maybe it's not as in like, it's not uh, frequent, you know? So that can also lead like a woman will be saying, ah, uh, you are not giving, you are no longer giving me your attention, you know? You're no longer, you know, you're no longer, you no longer, you're no longer concerned, something like that, you know, because we women, but I would say that we are not, we are not satisfied. <laughs> we are not satisfied at all. <laughs> Praise the Lord, sir. Hallelujah. Sister Claire, are you free now or you are still in this post? Okay, my, my question is, we see, it looks like this attention seems to be going women's way. Do men also not need this attention? Ah, you got a, a good haircut. This you only talk about women like women only like your monopoly of feelings. What this man you are saying? Ah, now this man you have been making good food for him or Bono, a goosey, all this thing. Now his stomach is like this. Now you're starting complaining. Said ah, you cannot give me a compliment. Go to the gym. What happens? If we, we we need to balance the two. You are the same woman. You are out in the kitchen, spend four five hours. He eats all the food that we make. You are blaming him that you are gaining weight, yet you are the one who is encouraging to eat. He enjoys your food. Why do we say he is giving you attention by enjoying your food? But so, can you tell us, my sister, is it a one way road? Your husband also needs attention. Ah, honey, you are looking good today. You are looking like uh, you remind me 10 years ago, seven years ago when we met. When did we last give this compliment to your husband or to in a relationship? Because we want men to know also they need the attention. Because at times it's what we give in what comes out. Praise the Lord. Ah, uh, there's no sound. Can somebody help us with the sound? But she's not muted. No, she's not connected. Okay, now she's not connected. Ah, Sister Claire, can you try, can you try to... Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, so um, when it comes to attention, I think we could say it is linked to our needs, really, if I can speak for myself and in my own home. Um, when I feel neglected sometimes, it is because my needs are not being met. And sometimes when you've been with someone for a while as i have been um you gather a momentum of boldness to tell them you don't necessarily need to be rude about it but you can tell them that uh, no you did not bring me here to just abandon me like this. i need you you know i i do need you and men too, as you said, to balance it out. Uh, there's a saying that men have three needs, three basic needs, you know, respect, food, and biological need. Once those three needs are met, then a man feels fulfilled. Um, as much as women have needs, men have it too. But I would say the difference between the man and the lady is that we are more expressive in ours. A man uh, can bottle it up for a while. And if it's not picked up, that's where a man that doesn't have the fear of God will go outside to have it met there. 
But once a woman knows her man and knows how to meet those needs, uh, these are things that one doesn't need to pray about because they are already in the word of God. So, and the Bible says that he has exalted his word above his uh, name. So sometimes simple obedience, because sometimes we're like, oh, prayer, prayer. But sometimes just a simple obedience of meeting those uh, needs. So to bring it back to what you have asked, yes, men have needs and we as wives or wives-to-be have to be sensitive enough to uh, pick it up and meet those needs. Amen. Okay. Mama D. We are hearing very good something. She says she talks something, three basic needs of a man. I could not agree more with that. I do, I, I, I do not know from which textbook, or is it from experience or from textbook? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we have heard that men have got needs. Women have got needs. So she said she, there's one aspect that came in knowing your man. How well do you know him? Maybe he's offended. There's something two of our sisters mentioned last week. Men, if they feel offended, they quietly withdraw. I call it the tortoise effect. They just cover themselves there at home. You know, the tortoise doesn't move. It just withdraws, just get inside. It will still be there. Physically, it's there. So we want to know, how do we take, how do we meet this need? How do I know my man? Number two. Knowing your husband, how do you know, knowing your man? At times, maybe you are talking like example to met him last week. You must know, they say, if I go in this area, you withdraw, and you still continue to that same area again. So, what can we tell a brother who is listening? the Lord. Yes, I, it's very true what my sister uh, has just said that we have to learn if this. Let me We have got interference. She is going to another room. She was sitting close to sister neighbor. Sister neighbor Noella. Good evening. Ah, this smile. I think it's sitting in concurrent. We we want to know these things because knowing your man is very important. She mentioned these are very basic fundamental things that if done right, we can build your home. The Bible said a wise woman can build a house or she can destroy it. Hmm. Sister neighbor. Praise the Lord. I, I was just saying in my mind that Pastor J, please don't call me because I want to learn from others. <laughs> no, it, and immediately he just called. No, well, right answer, there's no wrong answer. <laughs> it all. It is from sharing our experiences and we know basically what, what is generally acceptable. What works for I, you work for another. I think um, after being with somebody for, for a couple for, for a couple of time, like a length of time, you we need to to really sit down and assess to know what are the things that he likes and the things he doesn't like. That is a, a way you can easily get to know somebody. And we, the Lord has given us the best teacher, the Holy Spirit. I believe if we also ask the Holy Spirit of God to really help us to understand our husbands, the Holy Spirit will really give us the best answer. He will tell us who that person is and how he is. But apart from that, your interaction with the person, your daily, you know what he likes and what he doesn't like, will also give you an idea of who he or she really is. So that is what I can say, sir. Thank you. Now. 
Madi, you can come in. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, to know your husband. Can, can you speak up a little bit, please? I'm speaking loud. My volume is here. Hello? Are we hearing you very well? Is she clear? Not very loud, sir. Put, put, put your phone uh, volume on and off. Yeah. Put it off and then on only the volume. Don't log out. Yes, this is what I've done. Can yes. you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, praise the Lord. Very interesting <laughs> topic. To know your husband, uh, you need wisdom. It is like from the first days that you come into marriage, now you are living under one roof. You now know exactly who he is. Maybe before, when you were dating, or before you get married, you will be hiding his character or you will be like pretending. But now we are living in, uh, in this under uh, one roof. You will know exactly what he needs. And he also will know exactly who you are. This is the time that she, no pretending. Yeah, when, when you are dating, maybe you don't want to see him when you are not uh, dressing well properly or something like that. But now, it is now you are showing your true colors. And he himself is now are uh, 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 exposing his, uh, his, his true colors. So this is the time that you, we are supposed to learn much about your partner, about your, your husband, what he likes, what he doesn't like. Yes, I can, I can say uh, women, we are supposed to, um, to cook fresh food for your husband. You are supposed to greet him when he comes. You are supposed to talk to him like this, like this. Yes, it is good to teach us how to welcome our husband. And, but maybe the, the way you welcome your, the way I welcome my husband, that's not the same way my husband, your husband wants. So you have to, you have to, it's not only, what you are going to learn from others that will make your marriage uh, works. It is the way you know your husband, the way you know him. Some men, they don't want to talk. Some men, they want you to be talking. Some, if you talk, they will be like feeling like you are irritating them. They will try to find somewhere to go. Some, they want you to be talking to them. So for me, it's like, he, Taking advice from other women, or it is good, but know how to apply it in your own marriage. You have to know your husband, what he wants, what he needs. As a, as a, a, a person who has been in marriage for like, a year is enough for you to, to know some of his weaknesses and some of his uh, 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 strong uh, um, character. So in a year, you are supposed to know everything. You are supposed to know maybe three quarters of him. So two years, maybe everything. But the, the, as, as you will be living together, you are learning every day, every day, every day. That, okay, Some, most, of the, most of the men, they don't want their leadership to be taken away. They want their respect. I am I'm, I'm saying no, like, 100% of all the men, they want their respect. Like the Bible says that they are the heads and we women, we are supposed to be under them, to be submissive, to be under them. No matter you are a professor, no matter you are a doctor, no matter you are, you, you have got a title at your workplace, your husband is, he has got a, 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 a maybe you, you are a, a doctor, your husband is a teacher. When it comes to marriage, it doesn't apply like that. Even you are a, an apostle, your husband is just a, a believer. But when it comes to marriage, it is not like that. You are supposed to be under, under the leadership of husband. Because your husband is above you. And God is above your husband. So it, it was created like, like that. 
we cannot change. So if you if you are like trying to to put yourself on top or to be to be like you are want to to control him or what, this is the most thing that the husband doesn't do. You will be just creating problem in your life for 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 for, for, for I don't know for life because without that respect. He, you will just make him to 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 with it. He will withdraw himself from you. That's the love he was using to give you. That's the uh, uh, attention. Give you you are is somebody who is a non-believer or is the big way squat. He is still a drunkard person or with the, who is still in the because. Husband. That's that's it. They they all the men they want attention. When you are talking to to when you are when 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 they are talking to you, they want attention, not to say you are. Sorry, my network. Am I okay. talking to you? Yeah, praise the Lord. Okay, we will, we will proceed. So um, then when when we are talking about these things, I want to know when a woman wants to be appreciated, we will we, we, we'll talk about men. There's a difference when you say a woman needs attention, a man needs respect. But now we want to talk about the needs of a woman so that a man knows what is expected? Most men, they just heard every, every one of their age mates is married. Said, oh, I have found a woman. I also want to go and marry. If you marry for the wrong reasons, you may not be able to appreciate. You may not be appreciate what is needed of me, what is required of me. The, the, all, the only thing I can tell men is um, at times we need to apologize without doing anything wrong. Without doing anything wrong, it's women for you. One man said, um, he, he said the wife, I think we have all, the women have all summarized, I think we are generally agreed. The man is a man of God. He wanted to go out, say, honey, is everything okay? He said, said, yes, it's okay. As he wanted to leave, he saw the woman started crying. He came, just gave her a hug. And that's all she needed. So it's times some they cannot continue to be fighting for attention at times. So we as men, we need to know, we need to make time constantly, constantly. When you say constantly, what do you mean? Maybe two or three times. There are things, activities that a man can do with a wife, working together, for example. You don't need you don't need money to working holding hands. Chief amongst them are those that are in holiness or ministers. They cannot hold hands with their own with their own wives. It's like their brother and sister. If in your own sister we hold hands when you're moving, what is we know we, we, we do not want to take our level of holiness like we it breaks the barriers. There's nothing unholy holding hands with your wife. We've seen most, we, we are not encouraging those that casual, um, that casual in, in, um, in churches. They start like, they are romantic in churches, see, they encourage them, hey, were you not together at home? Said yes. What nonsense are you doing in the, in the presence of God? So we need to strike the balance between the two. When you say giving time constantly, attention, what do we mean? There are things that we can do. Reading the Bible together, these are little things that can make a lot of difference. A lot of difference. You don't need money to walk together holding hands. You don't need money to read Bible together. You don't need money for you to, for you to, uh, to pray together. For you to go to, there are shops, you know, shops like once in a while, it, it could cost three or five euros. It could be water, it could be coffee. Just changing the environment, there are little things that can make a difference. 
little things that can make a difference. When that, when that foundation is laid, is laid, you will see things, problem, you've got problems, you've got a way of beginning to solve themselves. Appreciation, that's, that's what you say, say appreciate a woman. When she puts on, it could be a dress, there's a dress, you know, when she puts on, said, ah, I feel like, oh, that's my wife. That's the one that I know. You are saying this to yourself. But if you don't see it at times, it, it gets to a point where somebody doesn't know whether what you are putting is, I don't, I don't know what is your favorite dress. I don't know. So, oh, when you're putting this dress, you know, you make me feel like, you know, I'm the real husband. Or there are little things that a husband can appreciate. Say, oh, these are the two best dresses. If I'm invited anyway, these are the type of dresses that I want you to put on. So it times that appreciation is very important. Not only appreciation, at times when she makes good food, waiting for you to make good food. I know at times, chief, I must, a chief culprit, uh, especially we African men, we have got a disease. It is a huge disease. We should pray for mercy. Let me give for those that have um, children in marriage. When a husband gets two, five, ten minutes to the child to go to one another, they can hardly do it. When a woman makes a very good food for you, we don't acknowledge at times. At times, these are little things, little things, but we need to cultivate the culture so that also men will begin to appreciate. Even if you eat the whole food, you are still communicating. Like I think Sister Claire said, some men, I'm no I'm longer sure who said it, say some do not talk. They were just, they show, they demonstrate it. You know, love at times is, it's something, it's, um, it's verbal. It, 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 it is some practical, something that you demonstrate. So if he eats your food, if he gets his, meets his biological needs, the aspects of the relationship, then you know he is committed. But if he doesn't show also, these are little things. When you know he's appreciating me, what do you mean by appreciating? Cleaning the houses, cleaning the rooms, cleaning the house. There are certain chores that we cannot do. At times, it's not a, it's not a must, but it goes a long way to build a culture which is reciprocal. The more one starts, you know, one of the two needs to be an adult. Let, 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 let us put it bluntly like this. One of the two needs to be an adult. The moment you come in, especially this issue of equal rights, equal rights, they don't work. They have never worked anyway. God is not a Democrat. So there are no equal rights. To come and say, ah, we are equal, we are equal. That we can do at work. All things being equal, a third person uses more so. So we cannot say, ah, it's equal, it's equal. Nothing is equal in this life. That's how things are. So what are we trying? We are trying to encourage the men as much as we know, we say, yes, a woman needs to be appreciated. A woman needs to be acknowledged. There are men who take a um, Facebook page, they will put <laughs> they will put a, a white or evil on, on a Facebook page. Not even your wife, you know, not even your wife picture. One woman from Facebook page, maybe it's a demon, you don't know. You start getting useless dreams. Oh, but I don't got this dream for me. I don't know what is happening. All those things you can open the doors through carelessness. If you don't know them, don't put them on your profile picture. So it is important that as men, we make time for our women consistently. Not only time, we also talk about family, also for the children. These are things that we may not know it now, but in the future, we do not want to live with regret because this is the time to create lasting bonds in a relationship. The other thing that I see as men, uh, what a woman needs, um, most men, I think 90%, of the men, the mistake we make we make is we seek to change another person. 
I must, I must change. I must change you. No man has got capacity to change anybody except the Lord Jesus Christ. So by it, this is what builds in resistance. This is what gives in all these things where you say, oh, because you are trying to change something. If in a dog, when it comes with three years, you cannot teach it new manners. If you have got a pet in the house. So you need to accept that a person the way they are. That's who they are. Accept them, their shortcomings. That's why you are two. You complement one another. You don't compete with one another. So the aspect of changing, it is you who must change to accept the other person, the shortcomings. We know our shortcomings. Some are quick to anger, some are this. You know, you know when the fuse don't give each other electricity, you know, so, ah, okay, this is the point, the point now. You withdraw. These are little things that like like you all you are all alluding to, to say, know your husband, know your man. How do you know him? If you think this issue is going to lead to a misunderstanding, to a fight, withdraw. Learn to back up, to, to back off. When there's a situation and say, oh, this issue, if you feel passionately about it, then don't, don't bring it up. Because you're only bringing sorrow to yourself. You will spoil the whole day with the draws. If he's not a Christian, he goes drinking with other men, who knows what is going to come there? The devil just say, look at that woman. Just say hi. The next thing he is falling into the hands of somebody. So as men, we must learn also how to accept them for who they are. And we must learn to let go of trying to change a person. We must let that effort die. You cannot change a person unless if it is a child, because a child when it comes, they come empty in the world. The other thing that a woman needs is compassion, to cultivate a culture of compassion. Like we are saying, this needs compassion. What is compassion? How many men, I wanted to ask this question, how many men have made break, bed, uh, breakfast in bed for their wives? To say, ah, my wife, I just want you to, to, to spoil you. These are little things that can kill, that can kill, can, oh, not, not, let, I want to, I'm using it positively, that can put the fire of love or the fire in the heart of a woman. This is, these are little things. Only bre um, breakfast in bed. You just make a tray, you just make a surprise when she's sleeping, just wake you, wake, wake up. You bring that, sees this, she drinks, so you can go to sleep. You go clean the house, clean this thing. Believe me, you would have made a day. The rewards which you'll get, they are more than encouraging. You will find that you would, you would have got the key. So, as men, not that we are obligated to, but these are little things. You don't need money because the food is there in the house. Making your coffee is only boiling water. How many men are doing it? These are little things. We are Christians before we become African men or Arab, because these are the two especially hardcore. They do not they say, oh, it's a woman's job. It's a woman's job. It's not a job for anybody. Love is very universal. Needs of a woman, as we are talking, is very universal. I think uh, our daughter, sister Sonia, said something very interesting. I think she said, offer a listening ear. That the art of listening should go both ways. Let's, one, let, um, I will tell you, an advice that I gave one couple about seven years ago. They used to fight. It doesn't matter if it's in the church. Anyway, they will fight. Whether there's a teaching like this, where it's trying to say, ah, how do we reconcile when there are things? When, when we are talking about these issues, I'm not saying, say, how to listen, listen, this is how you should learn to treat me. The moment you do it, you are now, you are not helping your situation. Sweetheart, honey, 
please, can you come let us here together? Maybe we can do things differently. It looks like it's possible, it's achievable. And then you give somebody the opportunity. When a man, a, 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 a man or a woman is called a woman, don't, when you are serving food to your husband, don't be standing like this, listen to this woman. You are taking an opportunity, like you are scoring points. These are the little things. When we hear such kind of teaching, we are there to build. We are not coming in to put a wedge between husband and wife. Because God said, whatever God has joined, no man should put asunder. So we need to be careful. As, we, as much as we are rebuking men, we are not saying, go and listen to him. This is what we call a man. So what about him? Is he, is he a doll? These are things that put a man off. Where, what, what he will stop giving you attention. Because when you compare him to another man, you are killing his ego. Men are egoists. They, they thrive on ego. They thrive on this self-pride. They think you are only there for... They think you are, they are the only best thing that has happened in your life. And then you are busy referring to another man. Say, look what you call a man. Ha. The moment you do it, you have killed him inside. So we need to know the art of talking. There are many women like who went to school of wrong talking. They talk anyhow, insult the husband. I'll give you the same example of this woman that I was counseling the husband. They fought one day in the church. I said, okay, I want to meet you at home. I went to meet them at home, but I said, I only when the husband invites me. So the husband invited me, I went the next day. The woman started talking, oh, I did not see something like this. While she was on the phone, the husband was talking on the phone. She was really busy typing messages. I looked at her and then I asked her, you know, I got irritated. She said, ah, useless man, useless man, insulting the man, insulting the man. I looked at her and said, then I said, um, are you working? I know she doesn't work, somebody that I have known for, for a long time. I said, do you go to work? He said, no, I don't go to work. I said, how do you pay for the rent? He says, it's him, it's him, who, the useless man who pays the rent. I said, okay, who buys the food in the house? He said, it's him. Who buys these things for the children? He said, it's him, the useless man, right? I said, this is the useless man that does all these things. Then I asked one question out of irritation. When did you last sleep with this man? So, ah, sir. I said, don't say something, your husband is here. It took a five minutes to answer a simple question. And she said, yeah, say today. Now you have finished enjoying the man, now we are insulting him before a man of God. These are things that put a man off. If you can dress your husband down where there's another man, when are you going to protect his ego? When are you going to protect his pride? Three children, the house is full of children. They are calling him useless. He does everything for you. This, my husband, the business that you are trying to do is him. The same foolish, the same foolish man, he say, yeah, yeah, man. The same man that is trying to do something for you. So, Appreciate when you say appreciate and acknowledge, I want it to go both ways because he starts denying you of the attention that you need. He sees you now as an enemy. That's why he withdraws from giving you attention. Instead of a helper, you have become a detractor. You have become an enemy of progress. So you need to know what things get into the head of a man. The moment you oppose him, he withdraws. Even if you've got a different opinion, learn the art of listening. It's very important. It goes both ways, both ways. Listening is part of the conversation. We need to be very quick to hear, but be very slow in talking. Think, ponder things, ponder things, think them through. When you come after two days, I was thinking of that issue that you mentioned. You are making sense to somebody. You talk like this, you come up, ah, can we do this? Easily dismiss it finished. Said what? So if you dismiss, you are being dismissive. 
even from that foolish idea, a good idea could be born. So these are the little things we are not. We, we are talking about things that a woman will deprive a woman from getting attention. Know when you are talking to your husband. Know that is Lord in your life. You cannot change the Bible, the Bible setup like what King uh, Jezebel did with King Ahab. If you turn the order of which God made things, then you've got a serious problem. You are opening doors to the demonic world. And when they flood in, I am God, I am praying. Your prayers are not being answered. You are in violation already. So they've got a hold. A hold, when, when we talk about a hold, it applies both ways. It could be a man. Let me give you an example, practical example. A man, they are not married, who is just dating a woman, a woman on the street. Women are very dangerous. This is for men. It's a lesson for men to understand more. One man, he took a woman out. The woman was there, you know, women in terms of very difficult to get, or she was, he thought she was playing hard to get. So when we eventually got the woman, he went to a restaurant. When we got to a restaurant, he said, ah, let us eat, they eat the most expensive food. And he said, ah, let me go and buy our juice cut, our, is this juice cut, the one, the top up cut? He went, the man went and went, never came back again. The waiter said, hey, where is this man? Where is this man? This woman was shamed. I, I, just, I just want for men to know, to know because it's very dangerous. This man, what he did, the woman, they took everything on that woman. She went almost practically naked home. She said, because, she used the last coin, everything that she had. She went on a barefoot without, without shoes. Everything that she had, they took everything to recover the money. She said, because you have disgraced me after using me, let money disgrace you. It was a case that he held. They were not, he opened the door. You used the woman, you took her, you said, let us eat. And you knew you were, you knew exactly what you're doing. He was, ah, I don't have my wallet. Genuinely, I have lost my wallet. Something happened. I don't know. But you are facing the situation together. He did this thing. It was he it was almost 15 years that he met one man of God. As he was praying, the Lord the Lord took him to that particular place. Hey, there's a woman that you treated like this, like this several years ago. Said, yes. The man said, I'm finished. He said, no, you are not finished. You open the doors for the demonic world. And it was very true. For a man, if you treat, if you use a woman, there are many men. And you know, I'm going to marry you. You know, when a man wants to sleep with a woman, they will say anything. Anything, whatever a woman wants to hear. But you are committing, you are bringing, you are inviting a case upon your life. You will get what you want next time you are playing hard. You know, I'm busy, I'm working now. I'm not a lover. I'm not doing this. Now you are playing hard to get. When you wanted the woman, now she has given in. These are things that can open up the doors. They can open, these are the most dangerous doors, especially men. Once you commit, you commit, it's okay. Things that are done out of ignorance, that's when you need powerful deliverance, gifted ministers of God. Otherwise, this one, or unless the Lord delivers you, delivers you yourself, the other thing that women need, women need openness and honesty. Do we trust the judgment of the things that she, they do? We need that kind of a, a level where we appreciate one another, honesty, appreciation. You know, this, um, when you say openness and and um, openness and honesty is when you feel there's an issue maybe you feel differently about it when you feel uh, i feel differently about it i don't want to offend my wife no you don't want but you shouldn't you shouldn't offend yourself because by keeping something in your 
by keeping something in you to please somebody, you are killing because you are not being open, you are not being honest yourself. Whatever, I'm not an expert on women, praise the Lord. I'm not an expert. I am not an expert. Just, 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 just to correct the perception. But I'm just saying for men so that they also know. For men. For those that were left in a relationship, these are primary reasons why most have been left there. They were left because they, some men, they do not, you know, they, especially Christians, you know, let me digress a little and tell you the difference between a Christian man and a non-Christian man. Christian men, the women, they found them, they were very, they were uninspiring. I don't, I don't want to use boring for lack of a better word. You know, they, they were just solemnly, they were just holding uh, just Bible like, uh, <laughs> they are too formal, they are too formal. You know, it's just, even in the presence of the, in, in the presence of God, there's joy and joy unspeakable. So when, when a person becomes too, too formal, you know, the men in the world, they will just come, hey, I like this sister. Hey, hey, young lady or girl, wait. For the Christian say, ah, can I talk to you? Say, hey, wait, I'm talking to you now. Would you not wait? These are men, women at times, they need men with confidence. They are saying this one, say, can I talk to you? Say what? They, they, this, they are, I, I, I'm not encouraging men to be rude, no. But when you see some, somebody, it is not somebody that you're meeting for the first time. This is somebody that you have known. Somebody that you, maybe you're in the same church, maybe you went to school together. Stop thinking, say, ah, may, let me go and pray to God. You meet a woman here, you want to pray to God. Is it God that wants the wife for you? You have seen her, talk to her now. When you talk to her, say, God, there's a woman that I met there. And go, you present the case. So you cannot say, God, say, God, say, where is the woman? So at times we need this, um, we need also to get into this lane where we think, you know, at times we are too blinkered like this. So uh, let me go and prayer is needed, especially if you want to marry. It's needed, 100%. But before you come to that point, when you are seeing maybe a, a woman needs to know this man does he have interest in me or she's just taking me uh, like one of those Christian sisters. So I've got an interest. You caught my eye. When she knows said, ah, okay. Then she knows this man feels something differently for me. He's taking his piece this time, but I know his intention. Because if you don't, one guy is just coming from saying, hey. Young lady, I like you. So, uh, the things that you failed to say for the last three years, I will, we have seen men that let women just go like that. Instead of talking, because I don't know whether they are shy. We don't need to be shy at times. We need to talk. A woman will kill you for talking. No. Why would she kill you when she needs attention? A woman needs attention. So, openness, honesty, especially, well, I, I'm talking about the things that a woman needs. The, the, the next session of men will be covered by a woman. Because if it's coming from a woman, men are always blaming, you say, oh, woman, oh, woman, this. yes, we know there are so other things that a woman does, does or she can do differently, or she can do better. When we are looking at situations, we don't solve a situation by blaming one person or blaming the other. It doesn't, it still, it doesn't bring the desired results. So at the end of the day, you can blame for all you care, but you're kicking a dead horse. Now we have finished talking. Are you happy? You have won. They have won there, but they have lost the battle. When they go there, the war continues again. So wisdom is needed. Do not turn your homes into battlegrounds. They are dangerous, especially in the spiritual world. They are dangerous in the spiritual world. We have seen things happening. There are forces 
that are monitoring marriages, family relationships. What do they do? They just come in to bring confusion. Slight misunderstanding, you will, you, you will see, you, you will see the, um, the, husband, the husband holding the belt like this, wanting to flog the woman. The woman is holding a pad. Say, if you try it, oh, I will break it in your head. So we, we have seen these things. We have seen these things. The other thing that women need, they want, to, they want this, um, you know, when, when men open up, when men show their vulnerability, we are also human beings. We are not supermen. We are not James, James Bond type of a person. When a man tells you his fears, you see, uh, my greatest fear is he let something tip from that, let it come out. Let it come out. Because if you let it inside, don't let another woman be the one who's going to discover something that you've been living with, something that is hidden inside. He wants to show, he wants to show his, by showing you his areas where he's vulnerable. I've got this fear. What is your fear, my husband? What is your fear, my, your fiancé? He wants to know certain men generally have got fears. As much as we put breath, breath faces on, it's a, it's a very sad reality. We have got fears. Outside here, you are seeing a lion. Outside, there is a very, very uh, feeble, <laughs> feeble teenager <laughs> who just wants to get the assurance. That's why they say behind every successful man, there is a woman. But you've got to know for a woman to help or for the wife to help, you've got to, have got to appreciate what can you do. I'll give you two examples that I personally know of a man. He was fired from his job. It was the wife that stood. He said, let us sell our car. So what are we going to say? Just sell the car. They sold the car. I said, we'll use public transport. Go and invest this money in this thing. He went to invest. After two years, the money had almost had more than 50 million, 50 million US dollars from the business. Why? This man, when you look at it, he will never leave his wife. Never. He knows the sacrifices that for, for him to be where he is. He said, ah, do you, do you know where it came from? Yes. You just say, ah, I don't want. Even it work, men go through a lot of things. When you say attention, that's why I say it's two ways. Your husband could be treated as the worst stupid person that has, that has ever lived, especially here in the Western world. Even a village idiot here thinks she's better, there's better than an African professor. The one that cannot even write their own name, they still think they still think they're better than a, an average black person. So at times they bring these insecurities. Praise the Lord. So they bring these insecurities. So we need to show vulnerability. It is needed. It gives the woman also the opportunity to comfort, to nurture you, and then give you that love. That is the opportunity. But you need to show the, that we are also vulnerable. At times, we want to be superhuman beings. But um, to God be the glory, we are only human. Women generally understand how difficult it is for a man to open up. It's very difficult. You need to win up his trust. So you need to help him to open up. Master Jesus. Yeah. So like I said, a woman can only give in the attention. You can she can only she can only um like I said, women, it's it's not easy for men to open up. They need to trust, they don't need to be judged. Judging is the worst that a woman can do. Once he perceives that you undermine him 
or something because if things work for him it's good for you is he not the one that is working for so if things turn out to be good if you leave him at this critical juncture that is when especially the demon of african men the african an average african man the moment they get money they change the woman either they are adding or they are changing so it is a demon this one is a demon for africa it's a very big big demon for africa we have seen it but we do not want it to be amongst christians let it be found in the world it's extremely important so yeah the other thing is women need to commit to being a better partner at times it's important uh to to work on yourself so that you be, can become you know the person that you want to be is the it is the wish of everybody to have a home where this peace a home home is the last is is the last place or the yeah, every man wants to be every woman wants to be but there must be peace so the best thing you can do for a woman is to commit yourself to being a better man a man who needs to um a man who needs um yeah to just commit like whatever the case may be having a job not having a job not it is something that a woman really um a need for a man to commit himself to being a a better partner it is important this, this was because we are talking about what, what a, a woman, woman needs. what does a woman need praise the lord so, so brethren Oh. Okay, praise the Lord. Sorry. Yeah. So we're talking just basically, I'm taking the things that men should give to their wives, to their partners. We need to commit to being better partners. You know, at times we learn, at times we learn the hard way. At times there is no better man out there. There is no better man out there. There is no better woman out there. Just forget about this. This they are kept walking, kept walking with a bottle of perfume like this. Forget about it. Forget about it. It is all meant for seduction. It it is it comes from the mind. So, as a woman, as a woman, yes, you need to know that my husband is working. Is on a personal development, personal development to make yourself a better person. But you also need to help him to become a better person. When you commit, when a man commits himself to become a better version of themselves, the women get the, the she gets the benefit. She gets there's healing of emotions, healing of wounds, healing of things. You know, it's a become a better listener like i said listening is an art listening is part of conversation these are little things because we say ah marriages are breaking down because of communication yes how does it start because these are the little things that builds up to it so if you become a better version of yourself then you you, you start to see there are some benefits just like when a woman submits to her husband just like um you know men we need to be creative we need creativity what do i mean by creativity what can i how many men have bought a chocolate just chocolate maybe two two pounds or one pound or one dollar 
you just put you just put um praise the lord you just put some chocolates under the uh, under the pillow these are surprises these are surprises so these are little things like how do i please my partner how can i spice it Love is like fire. If you don't add more coal, if you don't add more firewood, it will die. It will die. It needs to be fed on to. So, men, I'm still on men because to say, what does a woman need? I want my fellow brothers and brethren to understand. Small notes, physical touch. She's not your sister. I've said, ah, you know, I'm in holiness, I cannot touch. I, I cannot touch my, my 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 wife to just touch like this. To come and give your wife a kiss on the cheek like this. Hey, there are children. Oh oh, how did the children came and came about? These are little things. You see, this one, the the the, the white one, in the church they're together. You say, hey, they're busy. This one, they're even kissing in church. Talk less of holding hands. Things that you cannot do inside your own home. She said they are children. So our sisters, our mothers, our daughters, we need to change. There is nothing wrong sitting close to your husband like this. When you see your husband like this, is uh -uh, like you are sitting with your brother. Is it not your brother that you sit close to sitting and laughing? What about your husband? The second person who is supposed to, after God, is supposed to be that person. So these are the things that put a man off when they feel they are not being appreciated. They will look for a value. If one woman just comes from Norway, just, you know, when a woman wants a man, ah, oh, this man, this your trousers is good, or they will pass a useless comment. And then it will scatter a man, a woman brain. Yeah. They will just come in and say, oh, you're looking good. Oh. What good? She has been seeing you with the same clothes. Yeah, for three years, you've been putting on the same clothes. You say you're looking good. What has changed? Nothing has changed. So you just want to get your attention. Before you know it, your smile is reaching the ear. You don't scatter, you don't turn your brain. The next thing is, ah, I need to drink coffee. Ah. Forget about coffee. The devil, when he's coming, he does not announce himself. These are the little things, especially men. But we, as we, women, I want women to know also, a man, he does better when you help him. Show him, he's there, show him. Show him. Can you be trusted? He comes, he said, ah, one man insulted me at work. You know, at times work with people, at times, you know, the type of job that we do is, Common sense is a is an advantage. See somebody doing something, say, hey, when you say something this, you may say an innocent comment, say hey, it doesn't look like you put like common sense or something. They may not show you, but the next victim will be probably the wife. And the wife you will come and tell you, say, hey, ha, this man, I have never been insulted. This man he told me I like common sense. One day at home, we are doing something, say, ah, that man was right. You don't have common sense because you want to get to him. The moment you does that, a man shuts down completely. He may tolerate you out of the fear of God. But if you want you to be part of his private life, you would not. These are the things then he will not show you a vulnerability because you tend to use it against that person. So maturity is needed. Wisdom is needed. Wisdom, wisdom is needed. At times, character. There's some people that say prayers are needed, but character is needed. I think one of our first speakers mentioned about character. We need that character in a marriage. So also, when a woman feels loved, she opens up. So it's a term, it comes also from us men. We're not saying a woman needs this, but it starts, we initiate the process. When we are there to try to please the wife, she opens up. 
I will tell us a story which Pastor Sambo gave us when he was in Austria here last year. He said um, there was a man. He said he wanted to divorce his wife. He said, I have read it up to not here, up to here. He said she not a fool, but not here, up to here. Then the psychologist said, hey, you know what? We want to give her the best punishment, this woman. I want you to give three months. Give her a lot of love, a lot of love. That when you leave her, she'll be very devastated. So when he started on that love journey, three months, things began to change. That uh, war zone, that, that war zone became an environment where they became, uh, they found one another. There was now true love. Because the money has invested, then we started to reap the benefit. Where they used to fight, things started to begin to smooth up. After three months, they didn't go back to the psychologist. After five months, they said, let me call this man. They said, psychologist, I don't even want to hear your number, even your number. <laughs> I deleted your number because I don't want to see it. You want me to divorce my wife. I love you. It was something said, yes, that's why I wanted. Some of the things that we look from other people are from us. So like I said, instead of you trying to change somebody, come and change yourself. When you change yourself, say, God, change me to love this person as I love myself. When you do that, it makes a lot of sense. So when a woman feels loved, she opens up. They relax and open up. Arguments, everything. This biological nature, as Sister Claire talked about, comes in. And this feminine, you know, vulnerability, she says, ah, you know, I'm a woman now. You start saying you're a woman. Why? She's no longer a man now, like equal right. Say, no, you are, you, are, you, are, you are the boss, you are the, you are the leader in the house. You start to see all those things that, um, yeah, things that used to be a subject to every argument. If she's, um, if she's not happy that you are going out with your friends, you need to make time. Learn, uh, is it, uh, I'm not sure, Sister Claire or somebody who said, learn, know your man. Learn to see through the words, actions, moods, and see what is the real, the root cause of it. What is it? So, ah, okay, now I think I know. To feel that, like I said, always, um, women have always been subjected to, especially African and Arabic women. They've been made to feel like they are secondary. Their self-esteem has been damaged. Their sexuality is like they're taken as objects, not as something. So because of the empowering, uh, disempowering messages, messages that um, attack the, a, a dignity as a woman, they need to have this um, safe space. They need to feel they're in the sure hands so we as men, we have got an obligation. At times we judge, but it is wrong. It is wrong. By creating a safe space, at times we will end up getting more than what we bargain for. We end up, the rewards are just more than expected. They meet more than our Sister Sonia said, a woman wants to be seen. I think she said, appreciate, acknowledge something. Yeah, it's true. She wants to feel you hearing and say, like, I can hear you. Being aware of an emotional state. Women are very fragile. She mustn't be affected by your state, but I mean, don't be affected as a man. You are the, she's a weaker vessel, you are the stronger vessel. I don't mean when she's moody like this, you come also moody like this. No. The moment that you give attention to, I acknowledge, I know what you're going through. So, at times, men, when our women, they are sitting alone at times, they just want to just cry something out. 
these are things God will give us the grace as men to know at times that women can be suffering emotionally. So if they don't feel like they are being known, they are being seen, it can make them to withdraw and trust us less as men. So many are in a lonely relationships, even though they appear to be couples. That's why families need to change. And the other thing is we need, a woman needs to, yeah, to allow them to, you know, to see those cracks in their, yeah, in their personality, not like, you know, because we are the masculine, they are the feminine. So they need that kind of, to accept that there are feminine things that women need to. So at times holding a door, these are, these are certain things that we need to do. Yeah, holding a door, you know, at times you just do it, you just rush, you're already there. But some of the things are caused, like there are things, underlying factors that happened. A man can be a gentleman, but you also make him to be a gentleman. So like I said, it's a two-way street. Don't say, ah, it doesn't treat me like this. Do that which is right. Do that which is right. Whilst the man is working on himself, you are working also on yourself. Where he is not acknowledging, you are acknowledging. He learns from you. If she is saying this thing, why can I not tell my wife, you are looking good today. Why can I not do these things? So you start it. When you start, it must be complimentary. You open up, you are teaching somebody how to treat you. So we really, really need it. We met. What is the major difference between a relationship to our partner, to our wife, and everybody else. You have these biological needs which are met by the other partner. So women need to feel sexually desired by their husband. They want to see, like um, when they see you, you say, ah, okay, I can see he notices me, praise your body. All the, these are little things that it's nothing unholy. It's your wife. It's part of you. She's part of you. Because if you say, now I'm in holiness, I cannot say my partner, I'm looking good. Everything you say, holy. Hey, God knows you are married to this person, right? You didn't take anybody's husband. Unless if you did, then return the man to, to where you took him from. Praise the Lord. So men, we need to appreciate also our women. Praise the Lord. The last thing I'm going to say is a woman needs to feel like she can count on a man. There are pressures of life, difficulties arises. Do you, are you going to buckle under pressure? So women generally need to know if there's a man, I can trust him to let him handle the whole process. He is on the steering. You pull, you bring the car to a standstill. So once that trust is lost, at times you will need to work a lot harder. Women are not looking for a perfect partner. There are no, there is no good man out there. She wants somebody with this drive and goals. I think it's my wife was saying I need a man with a vision last week. So they need somebody who, yeah, we just need to be at our best selves. 
So women are our women, our wives are waiting for us to change. So yeah, basically I just thought this part, especially for men, when it's coming from men, I know things that can put men off, but when it's coming from a man, it will make more sense to another man. Because if it comes from you, it says so we are coming, we are both coming from work. So why should I be the one to cook? Why should I be the one to do this thing? So all of those things, they can come in. But when he starts to appreciate, he does it out now, not out of command. We, as virtuous women, as women in Christ, we need to change. We need to change our character. We need to show this virtuous aspect of our characters. We need to show the virtuous aspect of our character. That is needed. We, we greet you, Ma. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so we need as men to change so that our wife can, wives can start bringing in this thing. A woman is like a bomb. If you don't correctly handle it, if it explodes in your hands, then things may not go right. But if you handle it good, it can work <laughs> well for the enemy, to against the enemy. So we pray that men, God will give us the wisdom, the grace to handle our wives with care, our daughters with care, that our women, will ask for the grace to be submissive. This submission is very painful, but the rewards, oh, they are very exciting. When you submit, where you used to fight, you no longer fight. 90% of everything that you used to fight for disappears. You start to see that affection the listening part of it. They begin to listen because they are in submission. If not, they still, if once they consider in their mind, say you are, you are being rebellious, you are in rebellion, they just watch. They may not talk, but we are provoking men to talk so that they know what is expected of them. It is not wrong to love your wife. It is not wrong in holiness to appreciate your partner. It is not wrong. Like, you know, this, this, this are, these are things that um, there's nothing ungodly about some of those things. Um, like if a man does help in the household chores, cleaning the house, maybe the wife is washing the dishes, you are cleaning, you are drying them, these are little things that can be done together. So I'll round up by saying what a woman needs depend also largely, it takes two. That's why I wanted to bring the masculine aspect of it. We do not say, ah, woman need to do this, woman need to do this. When it comes from a man, he says, ah, thank God, at least we know. Knowing is one thing, doing is another thing. So we need to learn to, for God to give us the grace to start to live those things. It's very important. At times, we may not, it's not everything that we are given the grace to do. So we pray that God is going to break us. God is going to give us the grace to say, God, may you make us better husbands. While says women say, now that we know what a woman needs, she needs an attentive ear. She needs to be appreciated. She needs praises. A little note, chocolate, flowers. Stop blaming yourself that this chocolate that you bought, you should have bought some cooking oil. Cooking oil. You are embarrassing him. I have known African women times they insult. That, un that unpleasant comment after somebody said, 
they start small. Who knows tomorrow they're going to bring a good shoe, a pair of shoes, maybe a dress. I know most men, they don't even know what size their woman wears. They need to start to appreciate. If we were not on camera, I would have told you something. Hmm. Praise the Lord. I would have told something that was going to shock you, but all the same. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Yeah. I will hand over to Mama D to round up for us. In Jesus' name. Sister Sonia, you say your smile is not innocent. <laughs> Mama D. Any questions or intro contributions? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to add something. Yes. Um, I feel that something that the women are struggling with, especially here in London, well, I don't know about somewhere else, but here in London, is that... Um, most of, uh, most of our brothers here, they don't want to work, you know? <laughs> they are putting all the financial responsibilities on the ladies. Mm -hmm. Now, there is nothing as sexy as a man that can pay the bills. When you go out, you work, come back, make sure a woman is satisfied in terms of the bills. We, you know, the bills are being paid. But a pastor would say, God said that um, I am a man of God. I will be in the church praying day and night. And the woman is doing shift after shift. Is killing herself. Shift upon shift upon shift upon shift. I will come and the man will just sit there and say, ah, I bless you, my wife. I bless you. You know, and the woman is drained. She's absolutely knackered. So that is a growing problem that I am seeing here. There is nothing as macho as a man that works and pays the bill. A woman can step in and help. Now, please don't get me wrong. It's a different thing when a man has a disability or things are not working out. He doesn't have his papers or things like that. And the lady has got to step in. But a full-blooded, able man that is saying his physical appearance is doing fine and he just doesn't want to work and he's putting all the responsibility on a lady. I think that is just cruel in my, you know, in my humble opinion. I'm not sure if anyone has an addition to that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, that's yes, very true, my yes. sister. Let's hear from Sister Odion. <laughs> and that's true, very big true. A, a home where a woman, a woman is walking, and the, the man is just like sitting there saying, Bless you, bless you. Ah, God, it takes the grace of God. Though. <laughs> that woman will sit on because me know, I know very well that we women, we have pride. We will want to use that man to turn that man into our slave and we will oppress that man. No, there is nothing like you know, when the man is working and the woman is assisting. That's it's bal it, it, it balances. Or maybe the man is was working, maybe he lo now later lost the job. So and that one is a different case. It's not that the woman will just be working. You know, the man will just be at home doing the uh, the woman stuff. Go to work, come back, and you say, "I ble bless you." May God help us. <laughs> God help. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a very dicey one in the sense that um, we know that there are people, and to tell you the truth, there are very few people, as a few, as a few, that the Lord has 
in his full-time ministry, very few people. But now, the, the problem we're having now, every Tom, Dick, and Ari, everybody now wants to say, oh, the Lord has called me into full-time, and I have to do the work of God. Maybe because they see somebody who is into full-time, who has the real call on his head, and they see the way God is working with the person. Maybe they see the way people are really helping the pastor and all that. And they themselves, they say, no, the Lord has called me into full-time. The thing is, if you are not called into full-time, as no man should take that step to say, I am going into full-time ministry because according to the word, that God, the word of God cannot contradict itself. It says a man who cannot take care of his house is worse than an infidel. To tell us the truth is just because of the Western world and the, 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 the things that have been given to us. That's why people say, oh, 50-50. There's nothing like 50-50. It is the man that is the head. And if you see, we're talking about being the head. You must show that head, headship, for a woman to say, oh, indeed. This is the head, indeed. And if somebody is acting like a tail, you are seeing a tail. And then the person is coming and saying, I am the head of this family. I am the head of this family. A woman will drag, just like the Saudi and say, you will drag that tail very well. And say, no, you are the, I'm seeing a tail, I'm not seeing a head. So, as a man, even though we are in Europe, men should be men, according to the word of God. Men should take their places. They should not push the women to go and go and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and then the women will walk and they, our primary assignment, according to the word of God, is to take care of the home. That's our primary assignment. But because, okay, the society, the world in which we are living in now, are turning things around, that's why you see women going to work. So but it should not be a case where the man will now leave the whole load on the woman. And then they sit down at home, they see them, they are studying the Bible, they are going and see them, ah, today they are in the computer, I don't know what they are looking for in the computer, they are dead, they are not working. No, 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 that is not it. Now there are cases where there are some men who might have been working before and they have problems. Fine, in that kind of case, a woman, no matter what, is to submit to that man. Because it's not that easy, it's not that he doesn't want to work. But it's just that, maybe because of the circumstances, surrounding him is what is making him not to work and he's, he's putting as in he's putting effort to say i want to work as in but job is not coming or things are not like rosy or the way you want them to be fine those kind of cases is different but not that you have all right you are fine just like i said said you are fine your legs everything is balanced and then you cross your leg every day and woman is going in and out the word of the lord will stand against you on the day of judgment that is it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sister Jackie, you want to say something? Sister Jackie? In the way, Mommy Lovea said that the word of God will stand against you and the day of judgment. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is yeah, they will do that and they will still demand their respect. How can you give that person respect? You get me? They will expect you not to cook and clean, even to wipe their nyash. And yeah, they're not doing nothing. May God have mercy. May God help us and give us the grace. So, okay, we have heard you, my sisters. That's him. Men in Europe, they don't want to work. They want women to work for them. And still, they want their respect. So what is the advice that we are going to give to a sister who in a situation like this, that the husband is not doing anything, but he, he, he wants to be respected, to be the head, but he's, he's doing nothing. He's just, he, he just wants to sit to, uh, to spend my money, I may, I'm not even having uh, enough for myself, but he's the one who is using my money anyhow. How are we going to how are we going to help our sister to give her? What advice are we going to give her to say, okay, my sister, this is your situation. How are we going to help our sister who is in this kind of situation? 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The, that, 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 that answer, we cannot expect it to come from a woman. It will be taken, it will, men, men will easily attack it. Once we have said that the solution must come from a man, why should it come from a man? Like our sister rightfully said, when you see yourself demanding for respect, you have lost it. If you are doing that which you are supposed to do, when you are still being asked to say, ah, can, 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 can you please go and, can you please buy us tomatoes? That you need to fight for you to buy tomatoes that cost less than two euros or 50 cents. Then you still have got a long way to go. A man, I believe a man is meant to work. You must go to work. A man must go to work. Unless if you've got issues where your, your, your discs are not working, or you've got something, a medical condition that hinders you from going to work. What are you living for? Is it with 60 years that you're going to work? If this man says, I'm sick, I cannot work, and still demand his biological food, then these are the men that need to be denied until you go to work. You cannot only come to Clever when you talk about rights, you talk only to rights when you talk about, when it is in the night when you talk about your rights. When he talks about work, he starts saying, ah, my leg, my leg. If it is that leg that you're going to use to ask for your rights, it's the same leg that you're going to use to work. So men, we must need, we need to take that front seat. All the arrows directed that the family must be borne by the man. You are supposed to be the leader in the house. That you don't have leadership is a tragedy but you must step up to the plate, start providing. When my sister, while she is saying what is happening in England, I think we know a number of people from England. People are, people are working their fingers to the bone. They're not growing any younger. We've got a friend, family friend, who lived with their husband. The next thing after working so hard, he just ran away. He said, uh, I, he said, I don't want to marry again. I will leave. The next thing I hate is to marry somebody younger. So you can see all those things. It makes women feel insecure. Insecure. That is why some women, as much Christian as they are, he said, I uh, would need to, 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 to protect. They need to be protected as well. Because we, we, we need to understand one thing here. When a woman gives in, there is no sensible woman unless if she's initiated into blind witchcraft who wants to genuinely leave their marriage or say, let me go home. Let me leave this man. There is nothing worthy than two people who are coming in, in unity and in purpose. Unless if you said you, you met that you're going to be fighting every day. So men, don't be asked, like I say, men, we must know what size our women put on, not only their clothes, shoes, their pants, their breasts, all those things, you must be able to know. These are things that can ignite a fire in a woman. You cannot tell me, I, I don't know, I don't know. Who is, who is going to know? These are little things that a man should know. If you ask me, Probably I know these things better than my wife, because she wouldn't remember. Say, ah, you know better. So these are little things that a man should know. And when you go out, you just see something. It's just a swan blouse. You know your wife weighs 42. You are going to bring a size 48, like it's a big mama. Those fat, fat, uh, fat woman. So these are the little things. As much as you try, you are trying to mean good. It can also discourage somebody. Say. When are you going to know me? Is it, with, it, is it when I'm 60? So men, not only working, when you go out there, if it is a flower that costs one euro 50, at times they are used. Bring one flower and something that costs less than five euros. It does not bring the world. That small little effort. Let us not hide behind Christianity. This Christianity, no, we're in holiness. We're in holiness. This love we're talking about, we say God is love. Love is not monopoly. 
Men must sit up straight. Men must start doing what they are supposed to do. Because if we need, we cannot say we need respect, we need when you're not giving the attention. You spend the whole day watching soccer. I'm coming late, you come late, and next thing I'm sleeping, I'm going to work tomorrow. And you still expect to get the same respect, Abby. You cannot have your cake and eat it. So when you start giving in, when you start pay, when you start doing what you're supposed to do, because we want to hold men responsible. They have got to, we don't want women to start with the big men, with the big boys, or to start with the first son, they will call a husband. There are some men that ah, please, can you do this thing? Can you do this course? Can you everything you're just pushing him like a wheelbarrow? You are supposed to be proving this thing. Oh, Sister Lafayette, there's something to say. Praise the Lord. So, Sister Sonia, when you are looking, when you are looking for someone, say, hey, these questions must be asked candidates. Say, hey, hey, we need to know. Say, hey, are you are you going to be this type of a man? We need flowers. We need this thing. Not now. I want to when I'm married. Because now it is can scatter your head. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise, praise the Lord. So, me, I want to say something you know, concerning this um, flower, flower, something. Uh, hey, concerning this flower, this flower, flower thing. Uh, if the first time the man uh, comes with flower, and maybe you don't know, that kind of people just started. You don't know the woman very well. You know, you give the woman flower. But time goes on, you get to understand that. Uh, She's not the type who likes flower. Uh, please, you need to study your wife and understand your wife that she's not a flower person. And then if she's the one who likes, um, because she knows that flower will spoil. So she wants something that she can be seen. She wears the clothes. Says, ah, this is my husband that bought it for me. So the man should please try and study the woman. Next time when he comes to the flower, the next time she will not come again with flower. And um, so that we not keep all the seen money. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> say something. Uh, 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 Sister Lavette, when 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 uh he's giving like you have to buy flowers for your for your wife, it's like it's not like all uh, every husband should buy flower. You 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 know exactly what your 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 wife likes. Maybe some they like chocolate, some they like. He is just trying to say a little thing can make your love to be, yeah, to motivate your love or to make not to not to not your love to die in your marriage. It's like a little thing, a little thing. Like you go to McDonald's and buy coffee, coffee with a with a small a small cake like this. It's a flower. It's just a, a, an example. It's not like a sister Lavetti, a, a brother. <laughs> Your husband should always buy flower, flower. No, maybe you don't love flowers. You don't even appreciate when he comes with a flower. You don't. You don't see like he has done something that will make you to feel good. It's not like it's. He's just trying to say, find something little thing to make your your wife to be happy. It's not about the only flower, flower. Maybe you hate flowers. <laughs> the way you are, the way you are saying it is like you don't even like flowers. <laughs> yeah, sister Odion, we wanted to say something. Yeah, yes, ma, yes, ma. No, what what I wanted to say is that uh, that our 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 ladies is very important at the very tender when you are in a courtship. You know, it's very important that you plan ahead with a man. You know, you need to know, you know, the how how balanced the man is. You know, he needs to know, you know, the kind of work that he have, and also the wages. They are very important. That is why it's very good that during the courtship, you need to know the kind of mother you are moving with. You know, so that when you start giving birth, you know how to, you know, how to manage. Amen. You know how to manage, and also it's not that you know because most of us, most of our men. Let me just say in Europe here or also in Africa, you know, they can go into a marriage hoping that they will get a job. You know, they will get a job. And during the marriage process, 
everything that 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 will come, maybe the, uh, the expenses and all, everything will be on the lady because the lady have a good job, is receiving a good salary. You know, automatically the man will now say, "Don't worry, I will I will take care of everything later." So the the lady will now take care of both the bread price and all. You know, you just see it as, as a normal. So it's very good at the very tender as this relationship is going up. You need to plan. You need to lay it on a very good foundation. If not, you know, just keep going like that. Maybe after the marriage, you give birth to first first child. The man is still yet it's, it's not working. You know, but he's still saying that I've not. Uh, there is no job yet. Okay, what will you do now? You are in the marriage already, so you don't have any choice. So you have to stay. Amen. So because most of our men, they are very, they are very, they are, they are lazy, very, very lazy. They don't want to work. Amen. They don't want to work. So it's very good as the, as the, as the, as the relationship is going on. So you guys, you need, you need to plan ahead. Very, very important. So that it will not affect you. It will not affect the man. It will not affect the children. So that the woman, so that you, the man, can also have your respect. Amen. And also when it comes to the things of this uh, gift and all those stuff, I know African ladies, Niger uh, let me just say Nigeria people, they don't like flower. They like that thing that they will hold, you know? <laughs> seeing it tomorrow they will see it next like you you will just and that man will just buy you a gift now you will eat it you go to the toilet you know you poo that thing is waste they want to be seeing something mm -hmm. they want to be seeing something nigeria guests nigeria mm -hmm. women no mm -hmm. uh, flower ah uh, if you buy flower now you put it you know at, at, uh, at the back of the door maybe before tomorrow the thing is, is weak <laughs> amen so we in nigeria africans they need something like you know even if it is slippers, slippers, when you wear your slippers, you look at it, ah, it's my husband that bought this for me. Flower can sleep, flower cannot, it, it, it will not wake up. I'm just I'm telling the truth. Though. But it's very good when you give your life to Christ, anything that the man gives to you, you, are, you need to appreciate it. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise the Lord. God, God bless you, my sister. Now we know that Nigerian women, they don't like flowers, but yes, <laughs> I, I, we Zimbabweans, we are like British. We want flowers. If 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 my husband uh, uh, um, buys uh, uh, buy a flower for me, uh, I will be very happy. I will be very happy. No matter it will die tomorrow or <laughs> I will be very happy. I, I, I love flowers. Even if you come to my home, always there, there are flowers everywhere. Yes, okay, Nigerian people, they want something tangible, something that they will last. Okay, okay. So husbands, you have to learn your you have to learn, you have to know what your what your wife likes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I, I just want to quickly come in. I I, I, I do I do not want to sample uh, Sister Otion's um characterization of Nigeria, I know there's a section of maybe some people. When we are saying flowers, it doesn't mean after maybe he has bought some some tools, kits, some some shoes, you will bring because the shoes you don't buy every day. Shoes they cost 30, 40 euros. So I'm talking about when you say a flower, the little things will be small chocolate. There are little things that can make a difference in a woman's life. We are talking about attention. You cannot be getting dresses every day. That means you become carnal. It is vanity. We are taking you back because we are saying, as Christians, we must not, we must not, we must not leave love of things in the world. So, as Christians, the best thing we are, you know, the thing is, we need, we need to strike a balance. When I give you, when I give you flowers, I said, ah, okay, I cannot be bringing flowers every day. Maybe once a week. It is something that you see. Start little. We are talking about the spark that goes into the heart, not the flower that is going to, you know, the, these are things that we need to know, just like a, an infection. A, it's not the wound that kills, it's the infection that will kill somebody. So when you look at it from a different perspective, it is these small little gestures that he starts. You educate your husband, say, ah, thank you. The next thing you are going to hold face. Well, you said, oh, you know what, uh, you know me, I, I cannot do the, mo the moment you do it, you, you have pushed him away. If he has got a woman friend, they'll say, ah, hello, ah, you need some flowers. Once he discovered that one gives flowers, then they can start coming in to be giving. You know, these are the dangers, so we need to be very careful. When, when you are rejecting, don't reject it outright like he has done nothing. You will think you are generally don't appreciate. Whatever she does for you, it's always negative. 
you need to show appreciation. And don't raise it up. After one week, you say, ah, you should have bought me this thing. Keep, when you go out together, take a walk. When you go in, th these are the little things that you start seeing. When you go out with him now, say, ah, you know, I, I just pray one day when our finances or if you've got money, if you buy me this one, I'll be very happy. You educate somebody. Don't come in as a complainer. You know, complaining is one thing that puts men off. When you give a compliment, a compliment, to, to, just forget there are people, just give him a very big hug. You say, what was that for? Just no, just tell you, just telling you I love you. It's nothing, there is nothing unholy about it. Believe me, there is nothing unholy. What is unholy? When holiness, when you are called to holiness, that's where most marriages get called over. The people are hiding, say, ah, holiness. No, we need to put a little bit of fire. We need to put fire. We cannot hide behind our holiness. Is it not in the presence of the Lord that there is joy, joy unspeakable? So you cannot come and say, you know, the problem is when, you know, people are watching us. People are everywhere. People are everywhere. Were there no people you know, when you met? Were you not hugging before when you met? Brethren, I'll rest my case. But on the side of men, do not criticize men. They don't take it very lightly. They've got what they call the tortoise effect. They'll just quickly cover, withdraw, they are done. That will be the first and last time you're going to get something. It's not only flowers. It means everything for him, you're shutting the door. The same door that was going to bring flowers in, that was, that was going to bring shoes, dresses, maybe a handbag, is the same door that you are shutting. So you need wisdom. Don't be confrontational. Love is what breaks a man. Thank you for thinking about me. How many women, let me ask this question before I give up. How many women, let me, let me, let me talk for those that are men. How many women send their husbands SMS? Ah, oh, I'm thinking about you, I'm missing. I cannot wait until you come home. How many, or if you said, when was the last time that you sent such a message? Do you know that you can scatter the man's head when he's working? Huh? How many times, how many, when was the last time that you wrote, ah, oh, honey, I'm missing you. When are you coming home? It's feeling lonely. Immediately come home, just come home, I'm missing you. When you come, surprise him with a very big hug. These are little things that can, you know, a man, believe me, where you come six o'clock, if he finishes work four o'clock, if it is a walking distance, quarter past four is home already. He has got, there are men, he said, job, he said, my, my job is now becoming a distraction. I just want to be with my honey. I just want to, you know, this, these are the little things that women you must know we need. Don't, how many times have you said, these are the little things. <laughs> Sister Jack is, no, but because we, 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 really, we really need, because these are the things that brings love. We cannot say, uh, women need attention. How much, you can spend three, four hours talking on the phone to other people. It is only to your husband that you cannot send a message. When you talk to your husband, it's like you're talking to your man next door. Hello, uh, uh, this, uh, we, 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 don't, we don't have tomatoes. Can you bring, please, milk? That's the only conversation you have got. Look at another one when you call him. Say, hi, I miss you today. You're so, you're, you're, your voice is sounding like you're busy. No, no, I'm not busy. This strike converse, force some conversations. He cannot be just complaining and complaining because we are saying, we are talking about family. We want to build our homes. So we, we want men to know, but these men, they also need to be educated. Send them a message, an SMS, you reply. Say, ah, me too, I miss you. When he's going to work, these are the small little, let him think, how does he think about you the whole day when he's going to work? Ah, oh, you are going, tell him, let him go, say, come, let me, let me check whether you dress properly. When you do this surprise, believe me, I will, will hear that the fire of love is lighted in CHMI, it will light all, all, all other ministries. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are learning, we are learning. <laughs> uh, Sister, 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 sister Itoan, you want to say something? Sister Sonia and Sister Itoan. Okay, sister, sister Sonia. Yes, yes, ma. Actually, uh, got a question from Sister Audience Contribution. By the way, I love flower. Maybe I'm not from Nigeria. <laughs> I love flower. I'm with Mommy D. 
Okay, yeah, my question is, she talked about um, planning for the future while you are courting with a man. You should plan, know what he does and all that because I have observed so many people that they will never tell you their wages. They never tell you what they get. Sometimes they don't even want to tell you how they work, where they work, so that you will not know the weight of the the wages they could be receiving or the, the salary sorry, they could be receiving. So in such cases, when you don't know what your your husband or your husband to be, you don't know where he works and where he works. You don't know his income. And now you are asking because me, if I don't know where you get money from, and I know you are working, I don't know how much you get, I'll keep demanding. All I know is that my husband is working. I'll keep asking. So in such cases. What would you? Why could you live with such people that don't? You don't know how what they do, and then they complain that you demand too much. You don't know how much they have. Amen. Amen. Can I say something, Mama? Your mic is muted, man. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Okay. Then for that, of course, Shiva, I will say this: that first of all, if you want to marry a man, and the man don't tell you is what he's doing or what he's earning. I think is wrong because both of you are planning to get married. This is somebody you want to spend the rest of your life with. Courtship is a period for both of you to know everything about each other. Even if he does, he should tell you this is what he does. This is what that because why it helps you to already prepare yourself ahead of time to know okay maybe is any low income or this amount, at least you will know what you are up to. It's not after marriage you will not find out that this is the money is earning, and it is after marriage you start planning. No, the planning already starts in the time of courtship. That's the essence of courtship. It's time to prepare, it's time to plan, okay, this is what we are getting, okay, maybe my any is more than yours, or, you know, it's time to put things in place, okay, what can we do to establish more earning, or something that can be bringing us more money, or, you know, these are what courtship is for, so if, for example, somebody comes to you and says, I want to marry you, he's not willing to tell you his job, he's not willing to tell you how much he's earning, he's not, I don't think there is anything marriage there, because he has to, you can't be with a man or a woman that you don't know, or you don't know anything about the person, so that's for that. But regarding what we were saying before, as Pastor Jess said, actually, I wanted to really strike that balance because since we are live and there are people also watching, it's good that we kind of like put things like in balance because there are some people also, maybe there are some brothers also, maybe they are earning a little money. It might not be that much, like maybe your own earning. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't respect that person or you shouldn't give that person the due because you are any more than the person, then you look down on the person, no. Um, and also uh, something I wanted to also bring out there was this, that maybe, uh, for example, you know, one thing I've also learned about women, just maybe through counseling and things like that, is this, that as our sister said, when a woman sometimes has more money or something like that, if she's not a broken type, she can become very proud. And when talking about love, loving one another, the truth is that no man or woman can truly love each other if they don't first love Christ. This is the truth. If your husband does not truly love Christ and does not have a relationship with the Lord, bet me on this. He can no, never truly love you. And it's the same thing for the women. If your wife has not truly encountered Christ and love him, he cannot really have that true love for you and true submission. True submission always comes with, first of all, your encounter with the Lord. And also for the man as well. When both parties and as a husband the best thing that would be good for you to do so always push your wife towards christ and push your husband well you know why because if your wife can submit to christ and know and love god and want to be will that same woman will want to respect and obey you and that same man also will want to love you because he will see in fact the lord himself will begin to teach that person there are times the person might do things wrong to you the lord himself will rebuke him even without you talking that you know what because that person has a relationship with the Lord. So we must ensure that in as much that we talk about loving one another, respecting each other, but if we don't submit first to Christ, we cannot truly submit to one another. And if we don't love Christ, we cannot truly love one another. Uh, many couples, in terms of uh, statistics, you realize that couples that 
at some point have a deep love and relationship for the Lord, usually have a way, I don't know how it works out, but to love their spouses more. Because they see a deeper, there's something that comes out of that, you know, just that was why basically maybe Christ was making that example that, you know, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And there is something I was studying this scripture, yes, they first did it, so I took that book to me. He says something that struck me, which I would like to speak this to our sisters. He said, wives, submit to your own husband. He repeated it in First Peter. He repeated, so I, I began to do like a research and I began to meditate. Why would the Lord lay emphasis continuously in various chapters, why submit to your own husband? And the Lord began to minister this to me because it is easy for many wives to submit to other men other people husbands than their own husbands. And I believe they were also having this situation in those days. And Apostle Paul was making emphasis, ensure the same way you are submitting to us, the apostles, you come to us. Remember in the ministry of Jesus, the Bible stated that women were the one meeting his needs. Women were always around. And if you still see in the church of today, women are there. Women are very good in helping, especially with the pastor, they can submit, they can honor you, but out of 100% of all those women, I can tell you that 90% don't actually do the same to their husband. The Bible was then if I submit to your own, your own husband. So we must also bring this thing in that as women, we must submit to our own, love your own. Because many at times, I've seen many women do this. They love and submit to all the pastor. They can need and say, with the pastor. They can buy gifts and go and give pastor. But how many times have you bought gifts for your husband? How many times have your own husband come and you have knelt down, say, good morning, sir? Oh, good, you say, me, how can I need that? But you will need that for the pastor. You will call to check on the pastor, sir. I want to know how you are doing. How are you doing, sir? God bless you, sir. How many times have you checked on your husband? You can go and say, ah, my pastor loves suit and this shirt. You go and buy it. How many times have you bought something? Because we have been emphasizing this on the men. So now I'm like talking for them. <laughs> so how many times have you also bought something for your own husband? So we see that really for there to be peace and harmony, we must truly strike a balance between both the men and the women. When love is coming one way, it, there will always be a problem. But when it flows from both sides, this side is receiving, this side is receiving, it can be enjoyable. But when it's on one side, there will be a problem because the other person will be having a problem. He will feel like I'm the only one showing it, I'm the only one doing this, I'm the only, and it becomes a body. So we have to really strike this balance. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Over to you. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, my sister, for uh, that contribution. May God help us women, we have heard it. Hmm? We have heard it. Let us start to put it into practice in our marriages. We have heard from Pastor Jeff uh, about uh, uh, men. Now my sister is talking, rebooking us. Let us change so that our marriages will be like red of uh, roses, bed of roses. But another thing that I wanted to say is you see, these are European people. We are in Europe. They are not Christians. They, are, they, they don't even know God. They don't go to church. Do they? But you see how they love the unity that they have. They will respect each other. They cannot do without the wife. The wife when, when, when the wife is uh, coming from work, he will come and pick, uh, come and pick um, uh, his, uh, his wife. They are always there when they are going for shopping. There is love true love. Why is it? It is not like that in our Christian homes. These are not, these are nanny Christians, nanny Christians. Their love is like, you will admire it, but they are not Christians. They don't even know God. They don't have this, uh, uh, the love with Christ or, but I don't know. It's like their homes is like, it's like, I don't know, no quarreling, no what. Yes, they can quarrel, but with, the, with that kind of love that they have, it will just uh, rub off everything that uh, the quarrel is about or something. This love, I don't know, this, the, the European people have been in Europe for eight years now, it is for me. I have been seeing this, 
they are, their love is like, you admire it, but they are not Christians. They don't even know God. Why is it in our Christian homes, there is no this kind of love? Pastor Jeff, you wanted to say something. The thing I just wanted to say is they believe they have got biblical principles. The Christian, the, the, the type of principles that we as Christians are supposed to live are the ones they are living. So naturally, they attract the blessings of God. They may not enter heaven. When you see, it is easy for a man of God to go and sleep with a woman who's not with, who they are not married to. It is easy. But when you see those people outside, they are more ethical. They are more respect. They respect themselves more. Said no, this one is a sin. And you, who is carrying the Bible, you can do it without ease. So the most important thing is with um, women is it damages the pride of a man. If a woman, I've asked for a woman, there comes Asa when they talk to the husband, say John. I said, but we've got both names now. Why are you calling him John? Because you have become too familiar. Instead of respect, you say, ah, my, my Lord. Because if it is respect, it must get both ways. When you are getting your food, you kneel down to this one, when you go up to this one. This is one, this is one, I'll, I'll give you an example. I've been listening, I've been living almost, let me put it roughly, getting to two decades here. These people, the white people, when you are, when you are talking, if it is boy, boyfriend and girlfriend, we are three. When I want to talk, when the when the one of their partner or the man or the woman is talking to the other, they stop, they look at the partner. They look at the partner, they tie, take eye contact, meaning they're giving you attention. These are the small little things that we don't see. We take each other for granted. You are talking to somebody, you are putting a break like this. So when they see this thing, these are the things, they appear little. He looks at a woman who is talking, he's looking straight in the eye. You see, so she's paying attention. And you say, I'm doing something. These are the little things that we need as Christians. Christianity does not call us to some kind of stupor. We are not called into foolishness. We are called into wisdom. And the wisdom is when we start respecting one another. It is the same thing Jonah was awoken by, by non-Christians, by pagans when he was sleeping. It is the same thing today. The church of God is sleeping. Church need to learn what is love from the people out, out there. They hold hands, think that a pastor can need to do. You know, most of the pastors, the women are following the pastor from the pulpit. The pastors, either is reading the Bible, we talked about attention before. The pastor is reading the Bible, he is fasting. The woman does not know where to get this man again. So she will be standing somewhere close to the man to the, or the pulpit. So, you know, say, give your wife attention. She is now looking for, that's the only time where you cannot chase her away. It will say, will you, not read, will you not let me read my Bible? So anytime you say, I must, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to wake up or I'm going to drive fasting. When the Bible, same Bible that you are reading, it said, do not deprive one another. So we need wisdom when we are doing the same certain things. It's not fasting out of rebellion. If it is out of, there is nothing, it's zero. Before the Lord is zero. So don't even fast because you are wasting your time. So when these things are done, let's extract a concession to say, hey, I want to fast for three days. You carry out your duties. When these things, these are little things, but they can build a home. It can bring that trust. So we need, we're saying, like we're saying, balancing. Not only men, we're saying also women. We need to wise up. No, when time, it's not every time when we need to be fighting. Let a home be a place of understanding, a place of love, a place where people, because if it becomes like a war zone, when we come in, it's one after the other, let us let us be sensitive. We are live marriage is one institution which is under attack. There's one there's one thing I wanted to tell you lastly. The um psychic um demonic manipulations with they can just go in it causes a small misunderstanding. There's a demon for misunderstanding. Before you know it, it's, was it about coffee? What is coffee? Is it not boiled water? You see couples fighting. When you ask them what is the problem, they said ah, it's you know this woman. They now they said, ah, you respect. It's not, they, they will be hiding because they, they start hiding behind a finger. So we don't need those things as Christians. So my advice to men and women, brothers and sisters, 
Let us start treating one another with respect. Let us not become too familiar. Look at people who have been married for 65 years. They are always there. You, I, I saw one couple, they looked almost 60. They, they were like teenagers, you know. They, they were like teenagers. They say, things that Christians cannot do. Why would God not bless these people? Huh? Christians, you talk about love, God is love. And when you've got cold heart yourself, if we if we have got our hearts that we've been put under a stone, we need to say, God, may you give us new hearts so that we become more, more receptive to the needs of our spouse, both man and woman. It, because these are the things that filter to the children, even unknowingly. You may not know it, but the effect can be realized five, ten years later, because it's a war zone. They're just used to fighting. The only thing they fight. The same children, with, when you come and give your wife a kiss, they will look aside. But it is easy for them to be witnessing fight, fights for three, four hours in a war zone. It is not good for them to know that there's love in the house than to be seeing fights. These are the things that can build the homes. So, men, it's not, it's not a, it's not a sin when I come and hug my wife. Ah, oh, honey, what, this white people, I will tell you one thing: they don't go out without kissing their husband or their wife. They don't. They they never leave the house. They don't know whether the first, whether the last time God may not give. They live a more golden principle, so they've got a more reason to remember. Ah, oh, my husband left. Even if they quarrel. They will still talk things that Christians are not doing. You see, you, 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 you see one thing, when couples quarrel, that's where the devil will be ministering. A man will sleep at the edge of the bed. The devil will say, I will hold you, my son. I told you, you should have, told, you should have gone to Jennifer say, several days ago. He start coming in, and that is the time where Christians need to be sensitive. Do not let the anger go down. Don't let the sun go down on your anger or this. These are things we say, God, break us. Pick up your cross and follow him daily. Because if you don't, this body, this we are seeing, it is the greatest devil is our body. It's not even Satan himself. It is your flesh. Where when you are going to buy, when you are buying clothes, it's not the devil who is putting on the clothes. You are satisfying your lust as an individual. So you need to know the greatest enemy, subdue your body. Put it under subjection. So we need to understand the basic things. These are the things that will build us as better Christians. So my appeal to men and women, let us be more sensitive. Rapture, rapture will come when the other one is looking at this side, the other one is looking at this side. Is the kingdom going to stay to stand? Ah, we are left behind. That's what the devil wants to say. Now I would, you, when the rapture happens, you will see the devil doing press ups. They say, come and get the mark. Where are you going to escape? If you cannot, if you cannot, if, if we cannot make it with the Holy Spirit now, do you think it is going to be any easy without the Holy Spirit? So the time has come. Why? It is from families, then we've got better societies. But women have got a great role. I don't know what saying, is this sister Tuan was saying, God has used women. There is no institution that cannot stand without women. That must be acknowledged. It could be church, it could be this. They, when they choose to stand, that's why the devil also knows. It is the woman that he uses to destroy. He knows it is, it's like a bomb. Either you use it for good or it can, it can explode in your, in your hands. So our prayer is, God, may you give us this love. Both men and women. When we mention these things, we are not saying women are wrong or men are wrong. No. We are looking to find a common ground. How can we make our homes to work? How can we make our homes a better place of worship? We're not here to accuse, like I said before, don't say, husband, listen, listen, look, this, you should be buying me flowers. No, we did not use, we did not want to, because this, it, it's also discouraging for a man. Man are egoist. Man, they've got their self ego. The moment you feel hurt like this, oh, you would have, you have done, committed a huge sin. So women, I please, I think Sister Vivian, oh, God bless you, my sister. The first minister of your woman is your man. You can say that again. This is your home. The responsibility of building a home was never given to a man. Man, that says some women, old women say men are like children. You hear these things when men say, say men like children. The same food that he said, I don't want fufu here at home. You will see eating like a hungry dog. They said, ah, this one, did you see not the same food that I gave you here? 
So we need this grace. We need it. God has prepared you for this institution in marriage. You are the first line defenders of marriage institution. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to balance things out, please. If please, just about two minutes, please, sir. Um, I'm coming after Sister Itoa because I know her and I know that she will not be all offended. But um, she gave a very good exegesis of the scriptures, which is good. But I must say, Sister Itoa came from the point of single ladies that are yet to enter a marriage. Reality on the real fact is that most homes are in repair mode. Whether the two met when they were all believers, I've been a lost, I've been a waiting. They met and something took over and they married themselves. It is inside the marriage that they are teaching each other a lesson now. So reality on the real fact is that most homes are in repair mode. That marriage is being resourced. It's being <clears throat> brought alive every day because the 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 uh, real thing is that these couples, some of them, were not even a born again. Now, when someone is in such a home. Prayer is good, you can pray, but a principal thing there is wisdom. Remember, neighbor, Abigail, if not because of the wisdom of that lady, King David and his men would have come in to kill neighbor. I don't think that King David would have come in and kill neighbor and leave her. It's a lie. He, that man, he would have gone in, kill the husband, kill her babies and kill her too but because of wisdom her servants came and then said that look king david neighbor has offended him and he is on his way here to kill all of you she quickly used her brain went outside appeased him and later the next day she went and told him that this is what i have done so i appreciate you sis <laughs> See, that it will we shall fight late, late, later, you phone me. But the, your approach is for singles. For most of us, our marriages were wrong anyway. The foundation of it were, was wrong. So we are in repair mode. The, now it is a mode of prayer and wisdom. A lot of wisdom, being sensitive to what God is saying and staying there a lot of us now we are on okay after marriage case closed there is no way out now so we are stuck and you know i see a lot of ladies on their marriage uh, anniversary they are saying ah if i'm to uh, be back again i will marry you again it's a lie it's a lie a lot of them they are really struggling they are lying they will not marry that man. In fact, if they see him, they will cross over and say, you know, after what I've been through with, you know, with you, lie, lie, I'll cross over. But because of the word, the word of God, and, you know, a lot of us, we are stuck and trying to make wisdom apply so that we don't lose our salvation because a husband can turn you into a lesbian. A husband can turn you into... So you really have got to be careful and apply wisdom. It's quite important. So, sister, it was, I love you, but girl, mm -mm. amen. <laughs> God bless you, my sister. Very, very true. Yes. Most of the marriages, we, we just got married not in godly... It's, it was not godly marriage. It was like marriage. So it's, it's like my sister said, we are trying to make, to make it work because yeah, it was wrong foundation. Uh, everything was wrong. Now, if I want to apply something, the husband will say, who are you to say it? I am the head. You are not going to tell me what to do. Some husband, they will say, this is not our culture. It will not happen in this house. I am the house, I am the head, I have got the final say. They don't even learn. 
even if you say something that is that is uh, like advice, they will not take it because they are saying, I am the head, I am the husband, I am the one who paid my money to, 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 to I, I, I bought you with my, my money. So you are not supposed to tell me what to do. You have to do it the way I want it. So it's very, it's, it's like most of the marriages like this, like uh, there was somebody who has sent, uh, 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 sent me a message to say, if I want to say, if I want to apply what I am learning to from other women or from the groups, the husband will, will be very angry. It will be a very big problem because he will ask, where, where did you get this information from? Where are you getting it from? So it means you are discussing my life, our life, our private life to other, other, other women. You are, why is it you are, now you want to do it like this? Yes, my husband said you have to call him to say, honey, where are you? I miss you. If you do it to another husband, you will say, when, since when did you start to be a prostitute? Because that's the character of a prostitute. Yeah, let's, let's say the truth. Let's say the truth because some, they are typically Africans. They don't like those kind of messages. You say, now wait thing now. What kind of this message? This is the message from a small house, not from my wife. You are not supposed to do it like this. If you give advice, you don't have to say something. You are supposed to just shut your mouth like this. I was I was laughing with the, uh, the sisters on conference. They said, if you cook food for this, I don't know this tribe in, 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 in uh, one of the countries, this tribe, you cook food, you will save him. You will eat, you will eat the husband, you eat and so and you, uh, you just push the place like this. And you will come and say, God bless you. Thank you so much, say. Thank you so much, say. For what? Who is, who is supposed to say thank you? Are you not the one who, um, some people, they will think I am a husband. I'm not supposed to say thank you. I'm not supposed to say thank you. You, you are the wife. You are like a slave of which is not like that. You, 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 you. You got into marriage to, to into this marriage because of love, so it's not like we are we are slaves. Even the, the the women also, even no matter how the husband will will uh, buy surprise for them, they will not appreciate or to say thank you, my husband, thank you, <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> These words, if we can apply them into our marriages maybe our marriages will be better. Thank you, and I'm sorry. Some, they are very stubborn to say I'm sorry to who? Or to say thank you. No, it is not like that. It's, uh, they think it is my right. If, I, if, if you do this, yes, that is your duty. You're supposed to do it like that. No, with these English people, they will say thank you. Please, thank you. Please, thank you. I'm sorry. Please, thank you. I'm sorry. With the, our most of our homes, these words is like a taboo. We don't even hear them in our homes to say please and say thank you. And I'm I'm sorry. It was my husband who was telling me uh, 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 there was a couple. This couple, um, the 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 husband wanted to to go and answer the telephone, you know the house telephone. So there was a bus on the way to to the telephone. So I don't know the, the wife, when she was cleaning, she just forgot to put the, the vase of the flowers at the right place. So this husband just, he, he was rushing to pick up the coal. So he fell, he fell down and the vase was broken. Now the husband was saying, I'm sorry, honey, I broke your, your vase. And the wife also was saying, I'm sorry, it is, it is my fault. I was not supposed to put that vase on that. Both of them, they were ready to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But with, with other marriages, it's like, why did you put this verse on this? Uh, on the, and this one will be saying, you see, we, don't you have eyes? You have broken you have, you have, you have broken my verse now. You, you are supposed to see. How, how come you just you see, you have broken my, my verse? But both of them, they were, because of this love, this man said, I'm sorry, honey, I broke your, this one was, so, was saying also, I'm sorry. Um, it was it, it was my fault. I was not supposed to put it there. So I I just pray that God will give us the grace so that our homes will change. With all these teachings, 
may God give us the grace to be the doer of the word. What we are learning, let us start apply it into our homes. And let us not be hypocrites to start to apply it in our homes. Our homes will be better. Our homes will be better because God hates divorce. God hates a house that is always with quarrels and all these misunderstandings. The spirit of God will not dwell in that kind of, house, of, of a home. The Holy Spirit will come where there is peace, love, and unity. That's where it dwells. So sometimes all the problems that we are facing in marriages, we are just inviting them by our own, with our character, with this kind of love. We say, okay, in our courtship, it was okay. There was too much love. The love was like fire. You did not want to go to sleep without talking to your, to, to, to your fiance or you could, not, you could not eat when he's not eating. Sometimes my husband will be just laughing to say, hey, are you the one who is chopping food? Before, you used to wait. No matter, I will come at 10. Then we'll eat together. But now, <laughs> I will chop. <laughs> when he comes, you see me. I will be sleeping because I will be full. Huh? But before, it was not like that. I will be waiting to say, ah, I cannot eat. I cannot eat, I will have to wait for my husband. I will have to wait for my husband. I cannot eat without. So may God help us because if we think now we have babies, we are now in our homes, uh, we are now comfortable, no more salt again to add into our marriages or into our love. Naturally, it will die. The love will just die because this love, it needs spices every day, every day spices, every day spices. Yes, we can talk of this presence, but the presence that we need is this. I'm sorry, please uh, forgive me. I'm sorry, thank you. These are the gifts. These are the, the recipes that we need for our marriages to be working, you know, for our marriages to go on, for to, to have happy marriages, happy marriages. We need this kind of things. May God help us. And we thank God for this uh, discussion. Because of our time, it's almost like, yeah, we turn our can, time. Can, 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 can I quickly come in? I just wanted to say one thing. With marriage, in marriage, there are two things. One, you need to be blind and you need to be dumb or you need to be deaf. Let's say these three things. You don't see anything. You cannot talk or you do not hear anything. If you become these three things, it's like you're a fool, but you live in a paradise where you can enjoy. At times, we need this, this aspect to just die to yourself, say, God, I did not see anything. They say, when you come to that level of dying to yourself, everything around you becomes, it, it, it becomes like a, it will not affect you, the things that used to affect you. Submission for a woman is very painful, believe me. But the things that you used to fight for, once you submit it with the, with the wisdom and knowledge of God, say, God, break me. And God is going to test your husband. Where, where you are supposed to talk, God, God must test you to know whether, whether are, are you being a hypocrite or you mean what you say. He's going to raise the situation to which you are going to say, hey, uh -uh, well, why are you doing this? He say, is it not what you said you submitted? Maybe the husband may not know. God will say, look, you failed another test again. I'm going to, until God breaks you, you work with you until you say, God, take it all. Give me the heart that you submit. It, it looks painful, not for the, not that the man is doing it, but God wants to mold you to be a better person. It is when you become the person that you want to be, that you can be of assistance, of use to other brethren. Because if, um, if you have not lived through a situation, you may not know. So you can advise better when you say, ah, me, before I was like this, I was like that, it give, your testimony gives you authority to speak on a certain subject. So, like I said, you, our time is gone. Probably, yeah, next week, I think we can have another. We want to hear what, the, what does your man need? So that we balance it. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll continue. Amen, amen. Yeah, because of our time, we should have continued until tomorrow. <laughs> But because of our time, we are coming back again for our um, midnight prayers. For today, I think we have to stop here because some we want to prepare for dinner for our husbands. But to conclude, oh, 
is, is like we are already in these marriages. So we are supposed to work so hardly so that we will change this kind of the foundations. We have to change them to put it now into godly marriage. We have been in this marriage. It was an error, but now we now we are now the children of God. We are repairing our marriages and God is going to give us the grace how to do it with the wisdom like our sisters were saying to say we need wisdom and in love because we are already in these uh, uh, marriages we are already in it we cannot come out of it sister Grace said after marriage case close you, you you don't have to do anything about it but what we need now is to how to how to to make it to work how how should we do it so that we will have this um godly and happily marriages but from what we have been discussing and what we have learned it is our husband they need their respect and husbands also you need to love us as the bible says we we women we are supposed to be submissive to be under 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 our husbands we have to love one another we have to start to practice this, all these things that we have learned today. Let us start to put it into practice and let us start to have these words. Please, I'm sorry. Thank you. Let us start to put it in our marriages. God will give us the grace with this wisdom of, of Abigail. God will, will make us to have happy homes. For, so for today, we thank God for the wisdom. We thank God for um, the Holy Spirit who was leading us to have this kind of discussion. I don't think we can finish this topic. It's a, a very topic, a very big topic that we can we can spend the whole night here talking, talking. Points will be coming one after another, one after another. But to conclude this, let us obey what the Bible says to say, no matter your husband is working or not, is <laughs> the head. Let us respect them. Let us be submissive. Let us uh, learn how to live a how to live a holy life to have better homes. Hallelujah. May God bless us all for coming. We will meet again next Friday for our family discussion. We um, are encouraging us to invite friends, to invite our husband, our brothers, so that we will learn together. When we learn together, this message will go to many homes and many homes will be restored. The devil is fighting marriages because if, if, a, if a home, if we don't have uh, good marriages, the church will not stand, the nation will not stand, the body of Christ will not stand. So he's trying to destroy the marriages. He's trying to destroy the life of uh, the, like the, the relationship of a woman and a man so that you will be distracted. You cannot save God when you are having problems of uh, you are having problem. Your husband is just uh, doing one thing. He's just torturing you. You cannot concentrate. It is the works of the devil. So we just pray that God will give us the grace to keep on seeking him and to stand upon him, to trust upon him that he is God of a miracle that there is nothing he cannot do. He is going to help us to change our marriages, just like he changed our lives. We were living in sin before, but because of him, we are now in Christ. We are seeing light. So as our marriages, if we are willing, definitely my sisters and brothers, our marriages will change. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Sister Vera, you are welcome. Thank you so much, my sister, for joining you are welcome. You are welcome. We missed you so much, my sister. God bless you. Okay, let us pray before we leave because we'll be coming for our midnight prayers. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the glory, give you all the adoration. We magnify your name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord, my Father, Baba, for being our midst. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and guiding us 
Thank you, Father, for everything that we have learned today. Give us the grace, Lord, my Father, to start to apply everything that we have learned, Father, to start to apply them in our homes so that, oh Lord, my Father, our homes will be holy. Give us the grace, Lord, my Father, to start to amend, to amend our marriages. Father, we commit our marriages into your hands. We commit our families, oh God, my Father, into your hands. Lord, my Father, we commit our husbands into your hands. We commit our, ourselves into your hands, oh God, my Father. Deal with us, Lord Jesus. Deal with us. Break us, Lord Jesus, so that we will, we will what we have learned, we will start to put it into practice in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the grace to love our husbands more and more every day. Give us the grace to be submissive to our husbands. Give us the grace not only to see bad things in the life of our husbands or our wives, but to see good in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, my Father, what is it that you cannot do, Father, in our lives? We commit our marriages, our homes into your hands. Father, come and Baba, start to do a new thing in our homes, new beginning in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your peace, your love, start to fill our homes and unity. Everything that we do, oh God, my Father, let it be, Baba, for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that our marriages, oh God, my Father, will not hinder us to make heaven. Give us the grace, Father, Baba, to deal with all those weaknesses, Father, that, that, is, Baba, that is affecting our homes. Father, give us the grace. Lord Jesus, intervene and deliver our marriages from all the Baba, all the all the false foundations. Deliver our homes, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are already in our marriages. Give us, Baba, the wisdom. The wisdom, Lord Jesus, to start, oh God, my Father, to transform our husbands so that they will be, they will be in holiness to fear you, oh God, my Father, is their savior to fear you as their gods in the mighty name of Jesus, as their God in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, come and have your way in our homes. Come and have your way, oh God, my Father. Give us this heart full of love in the mighty name of Jesus. Take us back to that first love that Baba we used to be. Take us back, Lord Jesus, with your mercy to our first love, oh God, my Father, with our husbands and our, 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 our wives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we commit everything into your hands. Come and have your way. Come and have your way, oh God, my Father, in our marriages. For those who are single, Father, Baba, give them the grace. What they've learned, oh God, my Father, Baba, they will keep it. And oh God, my Father, Baba, and Baba, keep it, oh God, my Father, in their life so that they will apply everything into their homes. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you give them the right partners. That comes, oh God, my Father, from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the grace, Lord, my Father, to endure until to the end. Give us this wisdom like Abigail. How to treat, oh God, my Father, our husbands. How, oh God, my Father, to repair, oh God, my Father, our homes. To rebuild our marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Baba, because you are God. We, Baba, we give you all the glory, give you all the adoration. Ah, Holy Spirit, we thank you for leading and guiding us. We thank you, Father, for our homes. We thank you for everything that you have learned. Thank you, Father, Baba, for this ministry. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Father, for CHMI. Thank you for all the members, the lives of all the members. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the duration. As we are going, Lord, my Father, we are not, Baba, coming out of your presence. Let your presence be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your presence go with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the grace, Lord, my Father, to come back for our prayers in the midnight. You have said it, oh God, my Father, be watchful and prayerful. Lord, my Father, Baba, let us deny this our flesh. And oh God, my Father, Baba, have that willing to come and be in your presence again in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, oh God, my Father, Baba, with your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we have prayed. Amen. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the, Father, and the sweet fellowship and the of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us 
all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Some few seconds silence in the presence of our Father. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, everyone.